Aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihei. Today's guest is a person that I have known for years and years. He's a famous reporter. In fact, he's in charge, I guess, of the uh, Maui Bureau for the Star Advertiser. But more importantly, why he's here, he's a playwright. And he wrote one of... Uh, what I think will be an exciting play. And I, I thought it would be fun to see what's happening in our local art community. So welcome, Gary. This is Gary Thanks, John. Glad How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. You know, this is so great because, uh, as you know, we, we have, uh, you have been covering er events in Hawaii forever. Right. I've even covered you quite a bit. <laughs> And see, you you kind of, this has given me a chance to... Uh, Ask the questions and instead yeah, of me. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun to be here, you know. Uh, now, you, as I said, you're in charge of the uh, Maui Bureau. Right. I, actually, I was working as the Maui Bureau Chief for many years, and then what happened is they shut the Bureau down. So they, I, I'm working here now, although I'm oh. covering quite a few of the Maui events and uh, doing some environmental reporting. And whatever they want me to do. Sometimes uh, I'll, I'll do some investigations as well. Oh, great. Yeah. And so way back, um, well, actually, I first met you uh, when we were um, much younger. And you were taking photographs and things of people uh, protesting and mm -hmm. uh, doing things with government. And then later on, with, uh, when I was in office. Right. I remember that limousine ride from Kahului <laughs> to... Wailuku, yeah. Lahaina, when, when um, we were talking about Hawaiian homestead and, and, right. and the, the need for um, developing or, or giving uh, Hawaiians a chance to homestead in Kula. And right, then, right, right. And then I was, I was really pleased to s see that you went ahead and did something about that. Well, that was fun. You know, that, that, that was what was interesting about our conversations over the years, and that is that you, you really had a close connection with the uh, Native Hawaiian community, right. uh, but also just in general with the, um, I guess you would call them the local Aloha Aina uh, communities. Right, and, I've, done, I've done quite a f bit of work. Um, you know, I fly on my own dime. I used to fly on my own dime to go to meetings on Molokai when residents would, would be up in arms about something. And every once in a while, uh, I get a great story because of that. I remember one time Walter Ritty was saying something like, oh, those guys that, you know, the, the sand mining illegally and nobody's doing anything about what it. What a story that was. And then I said, wait a minute. So where are they sand mining? And he right. said, oh, by the, by the road and da, 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 da. So I said, okay, I'll, let me check it out. So the next day in the morning I drove, I drove by and a lady was hanging laundry. And I stopped and I said, have you seen a, a truck carrying sand? <laughs> and she says, oh, yeah, they come by over here and they wet it down and then they go, they go on their way like that. Yeah, that was a big story. And what time, I asked her, yeah, what time, what time do they do that? And then so she said, oh, they come about 7 o'clock. So 7 o'clock, I'm with my zoom lens and everything. And sure enough, the truck comes and I follow them to where they're actually dumping the sand dumping the sand at a, at a concrete place right. and then I followed them back into Molokai Ranch oh. and then I found out later on after I, you know that uh, they didn't have a permit to do it yeah there was some heavy fines and uh, then they, they stopped it and that that area there this has happened more than once but this in this particular instance they they stopped them and they I don't know if they find them but that was at Momi, and now it's a yeah, natural no, area remember. preserve. It's, it's, uh, it was yeah. a heavy fine. So that, yeah. yeah, that was okay. So why we're here today is you wrote a play. Yeah, I'm just uh, you know. So give us the background. Like first, uh, give us a background on the story you wrote about, and then maybe tell us a little bit of how you got to do that. It's it's historically based. It's about a Hawaiian cowboy named Ka Kaluai Ko'olau, who grew up uh, in the late 1800s, and he was married and he had a son. Um, and he and his son contracted leprosy at a certain point. What, what, what's, the, what's the name of the play, first of all? The Legend of Ko'olau. The Legend of Ko'olau. So Ko'olau is the person's name. Yes, Kaluai Ko'olau. And he was uh, from the island of... Kauai, and he grew up in Kekaha. Kekaha, Kauai. So, um, well, eventually we'll, we'll, we'll put the poster of the play up there whenever... Uh, 
whenever we can. But yeah. in the meantime, okay, so he grew up on Kauai. He had a family. He was a cowboy. He was right. just he was an a, ordinary a, cowboy. He right? was a marksman. People knew that he was a good hunter. He was a good hunter and a yeah. marksman? Yeah, and uh, he was respected. He, he, he worked as a foreman for a couple of ranches over there, too, like Corman of Hawaiian Cowboys and things okay. like that. So, and he went, to, he went to missionary school till he was 17, like right. his wife. So he not only and spoke And this was Hawaiian, uh, about when? Uh, 1893. Uh, the, this is right about the time of the, just overthrow, before the overthrow. Before right? the overthrow of the monarchy. He contracted leprosy, and uh, rather than go then forced him to go to Kalapapa, uh, you know, the, the isolated peninsula on the island of Molokai, he decided he wanted to go into Kalalau Valley, where there was a small leper colony already. And so he went there, but the, the deputy sheriff wanted to take him to Kalapapa. And he told the deputy sheriff, well, if you come in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot you. And the sheriff did, and uh, he killed the deputy sheriff. Wow. And then so the deputy sheriff was related to the missionary family. And also, uh, the, the government that had just overthrown the queen felt very threatened by that. Because, of course, you know, the overthrow of the queen was... And then he might have sparked the rebellion. Yeah. So they declared martial law. <laughs> you know, this, is, this is an exciting thing because even I, over the years, I heard about that. So mm -hmm. they declared, declared martial law. And they, brought, they shipped out more than 30 soldiers with a Krupp cannon. Uh, wow. Yeah, oh. and they brought him to uh, Kalalau Valley along with more than 20 sheriffs, deputy sheriffs, and uh, they tried to capture him. But he was up in the heights. So it's like a Rambo kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really yes. interesting. Well, actually, there's so many interesting points and, and why I, I really mm -hmm. appreciate your being here. I think um, most people may not be aware anymore of what a um, what what a what a devastating uh, alternative going to Kalapapa was yeah. way back when and, and the mystery you know it's really interesting but one of the first places actually uh, when after I was governor and, and I met you was that when I when I came into office there was a protest going on with the patients the plan was to right. move the patients out of Kalapapa and bring them back to Hawaii mm -hmm. in a site called, in Pearl City, mm -hmm. if I remember. And, and they, were, they were refusing to do it. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to go. They, right. the, Kalapapa at that time was their home. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember yeah, all that, of that. Yeah, that, that's totally understandable. I mean, you know, after being uprooted the way they were, um, you know, they had to leave their family. There wasn't much communication. So the, the people of Kalapapa, of course, were like their family. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the, the back, I guess, in the 1800s, back then, yeah. the, the, the remedy for, um, for leprosy was basically to isolate people. Right. And, and, and so they took people from right across the island. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was horrible. You, you, it maybe was a, you can give it, us a sense of yeah. what it was like. Well, the, to the, the Hawaiians, if you translate it, one way of the, the, the Hawaiians translated it was the living dead. Okay. Place okay. Well, we, there's dead. a TV program, you know, yeah. that does that. Right. And, that and, and in some respects, the way right. they treated the patients resembles yeah. that, doesn't yeah. it? It's living, living grave, that's what they call it. Oh, they grave. Call, living grave, yeah. And, and I think that... Um, you know, there have been a lot of stories like Father Damien. Right. Um, and, um, but the resistance to going there was, was more than just that. I thought, I, you know, in my, in my mind from looking at the research, it was institutional racism. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who went there, but you didn't see white people generally going there okay. at the time. You okay. Know. Um, okay. Just like you didn't see white people going into uh, plantation fields to work. Right, right. You know. And, uh, and so there well, was there, so there, what there happened? Other well, accommodations. Were well, there were other there were other accommodations. Uh, they would, uh, from what I understand, they would maybe live in an isolated area where the family could reach them, on but they'd remain on the same island. Right. You know, right. So these kind of accommodations could be made, but it was when it came to the Hawaiians and other races like that. A lot of times they they insisted on force migrating them. Perhaps because, and, and to some degree, you know, the, I've heard this, that 
some people actually didn't have leprosy, uh, it became a reason um, to maybe confiscate land. Oh, really? I, in the case of Kolau, they, you know, that would that would be the normal routine that would happen. So in the case of Kolau, what... Especially when he resisted. When you resisted, they took, they confiscated they his property. They confiscated the property as part of the, the, the punishment and to, they say, well, we're confiscating the property to pay for your capture or something You know, like we, that. we're going to get through uh, his story. I mean, there is a real story right. there. And, and, but I, I want to create for the audience the ambience, you know, what, what, what was really at stake in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So you had this government agency that was tasked with finding people who were lepers. Right. And unless you could have some kind of special accommodation somewhere, you were sort of hauled off. Uh, to uh, Kalapapa. That's correct. That's correct. And when that happened, I mean, I've read records, for example, of how they would just throw people in the water and make let them swim to yeah, shore exactly. because there was no. I mean, what did you discover? I mean, what? I, I, what well, was just what what you discovered. Um, I think uh, that there was that 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 sense of abandonment, of just forced isolation. Um, well, could their family go with them? Or, or For a while, they were allowing some of the family to go, but by the time um, this, uh, this, your, this, this story comes this, about. This story unfolded, the answer is no. And that was part of the issue, too. Okay. Because he wanted, and the family wanted uh, to have the mom go with them, and they wouldn't allow it. Okay, so um, so this is the, 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 the one they were, the, so this story takes place, what we're talking of, the, the main character is a uh, Kauai cowboy, yeah. sharpshooter. Right. So this is like the wild, wild west, you know? Paniola. This is Paniola. Yeah, he was highly respected as a cowboy, too. Um, but like this, the story embraces the, that, whole, that whole sense of being a cowboy and being out in the range and gone from the family and what happens when you come back. And a hunter. And a hunter, too. So this was not some guy you would just go up there and grab, you, right? You you would not want to pick on somebody like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think he surprised a lot of people, and that's why he's a folk legend because the army could not, you know, capture him. Right. Well, we're going to get back, um, mm -hmm. and you're going to tell us all about this. But uh, it, you know, the times were this was like in the eighteen late uh, 1880s, right. in, uh, eighteen nineties. Uh, right about the transition when uh, Hawaii was, uh, when the overthrow of the there, Queen there occurred. There was a tremendous amount of decimation, too, in terms of diseases. And I think uh, the, the play covers a bit of it because when you have a decimation of, the, uh, of your, your own ohana. Well, I tell you what, the statistics, on, the statistics mm -hmm. tell us about that, that uh, depending on whose numbers you want to use, that they were a between uh, anywhere from 1 million to 3 million people living at the time of Cook's arrival. Right. Let's take uh, uh, a million. And at the time of the census in 1890, right about then, it was something like 40,000 Hawaiians left out yes. of a million. Yes. That's a lot of people dying. That's a lot of people dying. There's a lot of people who had oral histories and knew where their lands were who died. Okay. And, okay, and a lot of times uh, that that's that's a thing. Like, you know, you notice how sometimes, like, when you have sugarcane fields, and suddenly people want to sell it, the owners want to sell the sugarcane fields. It's actually they 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 announce that the land they don't actually have ownership of the land. They don't have any deeds, so so they have to clear the title. Right. And the land actually belonged to a, a guy who was a Hawaiian who got the land through the Mahele. And so any of their uh, descendants, please, please come and uh, claim the land or... or okay, so this, yeah. is the, this is the era in which you're writing this story right. about this Hawaiian cowboy on Kauai. Right. I think that, um, well, we'll be going in for a break uh, very shortly. And uh, people, if uh, we're going to come back and we're going to talk more, this time we're going to get into the actual story. Because I, I want people to get the context of how powerful a moment in history this was. By the way, if you want to call us, our number is 415-871-2474.
Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with really amazing artistic guests about what they do, how they do it, and the most important point, why they do it. I think, I hope, the show is inspirational for everyone. I know it's always inspirational for me. I'm also the managing director of Kumukuhua Theater, which is right next door, and I happen to have with me now Will Kahele, who is an artist. We just finished a conversation. I hope you can catch on center stage. And we work together at Kumukuhua Theater. Why should people come over there? Because it's a great place to see uh, plays written by uh, local playwrights. Why should people watch this show? Oh, because um, because it's cool and it's uh, great things to know every week, and because you know you are a very cool hostess. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Give me my money. <laughs> yes. my Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee. Our guest this afternoon has an interesting story. He's a, actually quite a renowned uh, newspaper reporter. He's d written a play about an actual legendary historical figure from the island of Kauai that we uh, just discussed. The play takes part at one of the most um, transitional moments in Hawaii's history. This is right in the late 1880s, early 90s. And uh, it's about the time, oh, well, it, the overthrow occurs during the time of this time, yeah, there's, right? There's a lot of turmoil um, and a lot of um, alienation of, of their own culture and the land. Uh, at that time, um, you know, you had the Binet Constitution that, that preceded the overthrow of the monarchy by several years. Uh, a situation where the, quite a few people lost their ability to vote. Right. Right. And, th and then you had the decimation of the population where they lost their ability to recall where their lands or ancestral lands were. Right. Um, and you have the, the, the expansion of various sugarcane fields and, and other kinds of businesses into areas um, where, frankly, lands were un were uh, unoccupied, but perhaps still owned by someone else. Wow! So this is the time period. This is the time period. Uh, so tell us the story, the legend of Koola. Well, Koola, you know, was educated at, uh, in missionary schools along with his wife, and then he became uh, a, he worked for a ranch. He worked for a couple of ranches, Knudsen and uh, Gay. Right. And uh, he contracted leprosy in the 1890s, early 1890s. Right. And his, um, his son did as well. So how did that happen? That remains kind of a mystery, but in the play, um, the, the, it becomes such that the, the, the son's birth was difficult. They had um, a, a, a stillborn in the first, in the first um, attempt at getting a child. And so he turned to a, a physician to help him rather than a kahuna. Kahuna priest had been called, but that hadn't worked out. And in exchange, the, the physician asked him to help hunt lepers for him because they wanted to get the lepers and isolate them. And, and that and was the them. normal medical practice, the horrendous practice yeah. of isolating people, going after them, capturing. Exactly. But the doctor, I'm assuming in this story, that the doctor actually thought he was doing something beneficial. The, the doctors did. And, they, you know, the they felt like the only uh, solution was isolation. So they would actually go and examine the, um, the people and then uh, report them to the Board of Health, and then the deputy sheriffs would come and uh, arrest them or take them to uh, Kalapapa. But they had to find them first. So they, 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 they used yes. this, this cowboy, this person, yeah, right. this uh, man of the, of the soils and all yeah. of that, and, and to go and hunt this yeah. down. And in, in the play, um, what happens is that he gets leprosy in the end as well. Because I think that, as, as outlined, what happens is that he has to associate with people who have leprosy. Yes. He wants to respect the traditions right. and things like that. So and when he did it, he didn't just go grab somebody and haul it. I mean, he no. did it in sort of the Hawaiian the way. The Hawaiian way. So there was a lot of ho'oponopono right. talking, and right. then he would bring these people up. Yeah. And eventually, he, c he gets leprosy. His son gets leprosy. Yeah. And, and, and then they, the play gets exciting. Yeah, and then, then they decide um, 
to go to Kalalau Valley, which is a very remote section of the island on North Kauai. Right. And, <clears throat> the, and um, it, it took about, back then, if you went by coast, coast it took about three days to get there. Okay. Um, and uh, if you went uh, the other way by mountain, it was kind of treacherous. Um, cliffs but that's where he went. That's right? how he went. He, 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 he knew the way, the way <laughs> like that, so he, he took that way. Um, and uh, they lived in the valley, and uh, he had warned the deputy sheriff who wanted to take him to Kalalau not to come into the valley, otherwise he would kill him. And the deputy sheriff, um, despite others, including I think the sheriff on Hon in Honolulu, warning him not to go into the valley at that point, he, he decided to do it. And he was, uh, he was uh, the, this deputy sheriff was a member of the, uh, I guess, the people who overthrew the queen. He, right? he of was, the same family yeah, line. Yeah, he was related to the missionary family. He was married to a mission, the daughter of a missionary. Okay. And so when he died, uh, he was killed. Um, you know, they, they really... The missionary stepped, families, the, the, the provisional people government. Over, the provisional government stepped it up by sending like something like more than 30 soldiers wow. and, and a cr corrupt cannon aboard a ship and then uh, enlisted more than 20 deputy sheriffs to try and capture one Hawaiian. And they declared martial law in Waimea and, and certain areas martial around Martial law? Yeah. So, they, so this is the pr provisional government in Honolulu which had overthrown the queen. Right. Uh, declares martial law and sends all of these soldiers and deputies over to capture uh, Koala. Right. And, 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 and uh, you mentioned something about the, the reason for this. Uh, one of the reasons was the fact that there they were, were afraid this would provoke a rebellion. Right? Yeah, that's, it, it became obvious to me that that was, that was what was happening once you begin to read the newspaper accounts and things. Because um, that was the, the subtext of, the, of that, that era. You know, Lily Okalani um, surrendered to the United States government right. because she thought that they would, that the U.S. government would give it, give it back like the British did. Right, right, but, right, right. But, but that didn't happen. No, yeah, that's exactly and, right. And so it was a very peaceful... So uh, that's, that, that's yeah. an interesting point. So the Queen had surrendered to the U.S. government not the provisional government no. and not the re provisional government. No. She didn't recognize the provisional and government. And so they no. were afraid that this guy that could, f r you know, just uh, go in the mountains and mm -hmm. survive. And, and, that's and there, was, there was this argument going around, too, where, you know, that people were beginning to say, well, if the Marines hadn't landed, you wouldn't have been able to take over the government. Right, right. So the, the, from, my, from my own interpretation of it all, this is where they were going to prove that they could do it on their own. Oh, I got it. I got it. So this is in the story. This is the story. This well, is the play. To some degree it is, right, you know, right, the subtext right. of it all. Right. Well, they didn't prove that they could. Because he couldn't be captured. He couldn't be captured. They went after one Hawaiian, and they couldn't get. Well, him. you know why. Uh, <laughs> you know why. I, I knew is uh, well. It was. Uh, and and uh, what about his son? What happened to his, his son? His son died eventually, uh, and uh, so did he. Right. And uh, but he, would, he died free. He, he died, died free. free. You know what was terms. interesting yeah. about this story because it, uh, first time I heard it, I heard because this is mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it was a kind of well-known story, was when, when the landings were being done on Kaho Olave. Oh, wow. There was this, mm -hmm. this idea of, um, you know, going out in the forest, standing out, you know, and uh, like my cousin Walter made a Walter, career. Walter's uh, a hunter. He's a good hunter, <laughs> too. You know, all yeah. of this kind of stuff. Right. And so, in a way, oh, it may not have happened then, but it definitely, this legend was used as the uh, justification for direct action. And he, he did arouse the people. He did. Maybe he did. 80 years later, but they got aroused. Yeah, and the, you know, it, the, the whole sense of it is that, and, and the culture of Hawaiians and the local people have a great appreciation for nature. Right. I mean, in many ways. I mean, Hawaiians have many different terms for just waves alone because you recognize what these waves can do. Right. You know, when you're surfing. And of course, the wind. The wind. And, and everything else. So, so you, you know, in, in, a, in a wilderness situation, right. uh, these people have already been acculturated 
into hunting and living off the land and everything. Walter, just an aside, told me the reason why they couldn't capture him <laughs> was because Walter guys were actually tracking them. <laughs> <laughs> they I bet you that was what was happening in, in this uh, with Ko'ola. I bet you it was that kind of thing. You know, you, it wasn't just, it's not, not just running or running. They were probably playing cat and mouse. There, there was an, there's an epiphany inside that whole thing where he, said he, he, he realizes that what he should do is mirror nature. So this is now a play, right? Yes. And I heard that people that go to this play end up, uh, there's a lot of comedy moments of, yeah, of happiness in it. And uh, you captured that. And uh, also a, lot, a heavy dose of sadness. Yeah, and I, th I think that, that this play runs the gamut of, of emotions. And uh, some people have said they have, <laughs> they call it Stendhal moments. Oh, like okay. one lady, when she was in, uh, came by me in L.A., Puloku Hayes, I just met her, and she didn't say anything. I thought, oh, God, I, you know, I wonder what happened. And then she emailed me a couple of days later is that she was so affected by the play she couldn't say anything. Oh, <laughs> we got a caller. So what is the... Uh, hi, caller. Uh, hi, Governor. Uh, yeah, this is a great play, a great story, very provocative. Uh, absolutely have to go see it. And I have two questions. One is, how are you going to put scenery there in the uh, Doris Duke Theater? It's a small <laughs> theater. Um, how, how are you going to get any kind of sets there? And the second question, I'll take my answer offline, is uh, how can I get my tickets? Oh, yeah, well, we'll answer the first one uh, uh, after. Just see um, Gary right after the show. The first, he wants to know uh, uh, how you do this. Well, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, let's pivot right into where's the play being shown? The play is being shown at the uh, Honolulu when? Academy of Arts, the Doris Duke Theater. Right. And you can go and get tickets. If you go to legendofko'olau.com, um, there's some background on it, and you can click on here, and it'll take you directly to the Doris Duke ticket site. So he wants to know, the, uh, the, the caller wants to know, how, how do you get this scenery and all in there? Is, is there? I guess in his mind eye, he's seen this valley. And right. people we do we um, actually he describes it of course right you know, the, the character describes it um, but we we had we've done some innovative stuff as far as we have a mob, mobile rear projection unit that that's only five feet wide or less okay. than five feet and wide you, and it bounces you, and images off a mirror and it goes on to a so this nine is foot a, it's, screen. it's tight in it it's calls tight. For, okay yeah. I, want, I want to go quickly through who the star who's the star? Yeah. you got a great actor an right iconic here. core I'll tell you, he is remarkable. Really? I mean, it, it, uh, Anthony Sepulveda, who's the vice president of Warner Brothers Casting, went to the play in Los Angeles. And I, I thanked him for going. I sent an email thanking him for going. He said, the actor was fantastic. The play was awesome. He, he was just, he said he hoped that it had a run fantastic. in L.A. You know, one of the things about this play is that more people on the mainland have seen it than in Hawaii. That's right. <laughs> so we have got to drum up the audience. We got sep September, November 19th. I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday, November 19th, 7:30, at the Doris Duke Theater. Right. That's right. And what we want to do, I mean, you want to take this play and uh, put it Broadway, at least yeah, off Broadway. Off Broadway. That's, and that's so you've got uh, you got an initiative uh, started to do that. Yeah, we're we're starting a committee to discuss how to take it to Broadway. I mean, okay. to, to Manhattan, at least. Okay, so the yeah. first step is getting people to go to the play, right? That's right. And then we're going to take it to Manhattan. Folks, our time is up. We have just had another wonderful show. And um, go see The Legend of Koalao, uh Saturday, November 19th. 19th. Yeah. And hopefully you'll join the, this movement to show it in Broadway.